Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Happy New Year. Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah. New Year's off to a roaring start on this side of the table, let me tell you. Yeah, well, I've been sick all year. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's been, a, been a rough kickoff to the New Year, so... Yeah. I just had the doc yelling at me about having not already gone to the doctor. Oh, really? Already? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've been sick for a week with a sinus infection. I yeah. really should be doing something about that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Really. You're, you're different from me. I'm a suffer-through type person. No, me too. But I, I said that if I had already decided that if I was still sick on Monday, I'd go see the doctor. And you hadn't. Or, well, did, or did you? Yet. Oh, oh, you mean next Monday? Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I thought you meant New Year's Day Monday. <laughs> no, no. I mean, yeah, I, I will. It will have been roughly ten days at that point. Yeah. If I'm not over it, I probably need some antibiotics. Ah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, because everybody else in all the adults anyway that this have infected it, at least assuming that it's what my um my youngest nephew was passing around. Yeah. Um, it only lasted a couple of days with everybody else. There was a bug that kind of ran through my store that was a couple of day thing. Like mm-hmm. everybody, they were pretty well, most of my st- staff managed to work through it, but it was rough. Yeah. Um, and I had a few that I think had something else that weren't able to work through it. So mm-hmm. like there's stuff going around everywhere. It's, this whole area is just a peach tree disc right now. Like it's just Petri. horrible. Peach tree. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> um, well, I I haven't been going to the office mostly, uh, but I've been working. Yeah. Um, I went into the office for a, about half the day today because I had to do some stuff and some. Um, you had to go spread some germs. I had to go do some bookkeeping stuff that I can't really do at home. Yeah. Um, and uh, I yeah, so I went over to um, one of the guys on the other side of the building, and when I was about to leave for lunch, and I went in to tell him that I was going to go home and not come back. Yeah. And uh, I walked in the door and I started to say something and then I started to cough and I like turned and ran back out of the office and like coughed and then I turned back around and came back into his doorway and he just waved me away. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Understand. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm going man. then. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that time of year, man. It's just, we've had a nice, good cold snap and, yeah. you know. I used to... I remember for years and years and years, I was sick every New Year's. Really? Like yeah. every New Year's. I thought, it, like, you know, I have pretty bad um, environmental allergies. Yeah. So I just assumed there was some something that came out around yeah. that time that made me sick every year. Yeah. Um, because I, you know, I was never running a fever or anything like that. I was just, you know, just couldn't breathe Yeah. Uh, for days. And yeah. then, of course, there were all those years that we went up to um, my parents' cabin Oh yeah, that's right. And I can never breathe there because that place is so dusty. Yeah. Uh, I I realize now that that's the problem. I didn't know that was the problem at the time, but now I know that I have a dust mite allergy. So yeah, um, and it's pretty bad. So that's almost certainly it. Why I could never breathe up there. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but uh, I I don't know. This year I think it's like an illness. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I woke up New Year's with a headache, which is. Not unusual for me on New Year's because <laughs> sure. normally, but this year I didn't drink anything. Yeah. And I woke up with a headache and it was kind of a weird feeling because I was like, at first it was like normal. It's like, oh yeah, my head hurts. And I was like, wait a minute. Like my head does really hurt. I didn't drink last night. Why mm. Why do I have a hangover? Mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think it was the fireworks. Um, we, we let off a bunch of fireworks and had some stuff catch on fire. You fireworks safety is important for everybody out there. Like yeah. don't don't keep a hose around. Keep a hose around. <laughs> like don't put your debris next to your garbage cans would be my advice. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz some of those things reignite. Yeah. And burn your trash cans to the ground. Good to know. Safety <laughs> tips. Was, yeah. It uh, was probably would have been more valuable before New Year's, but it definitely would. Remember it for next year. Definitely would have been. I had to buy all new trash cans. <laughs> Well, I uh, I almost went over there, but I was feeling bad, so I didn't. Yeah. I stayed here you, in red. You so. could have helped me put out the tri- trash can fire. Yeah, yeah. Shame I missed that. Yeah. Um, what I don't remember what I was going to say. Doesn't matter. Um, I heard football didn't go your way. I heard that. What didn't go my way? 
I yeah. won the league. What you talking about? No, not that football. College football. Oh, college football. Yeah, that was disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, we're gonna get them next year. You guys should have seen the expression change on his face. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Went from fantasy football to college. College didn't go so well this yeah. year. Roll Tide, anyway. Oh, yeah. Well. All right. Um, so what do you want to talk about? Uh, I have not prepared anything because I have been sick all week. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What's on, I don't know. What's on your mind? Um, I've been reading, uh, Carl Jung's memoirs. Okay. Uh, I don't know that any of that is really podcast appropriate. Um, oh yeah. Exactly. I so mean, it's just not, it's just not political. It's, oh yeah. you know, a lot of it's religion and we've mostly avoided that on the podcast. So yeah, probably should continue to, although there were like, there were aspects of his, I don't know. I found it. I found some parallels. Yeah. We'll just say okay. uh, like the, the stories were different, but the, the ideas were similar. It was, it's been interesting. Um, this is a long book. It's easy to read though. Yeah. So hopefully It'll only take me, you know, a few days. Yeah. If I really dedicate myself. No. And then I can move on to something else. Yeah. Not, I mean, I'm enjoying it, so I'm not like just trying to get through it or whatever. I just put it down. Like life's too short to read a book that you're not enjoying. Yeah. Um, I have put many books down. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I was, I was thinking the other day about, uh, the talk with bad news, Brandon, and communism and why I think like true conservatives and libertarians particularly have such an antagonism towards communism. Yeah. And to me, what it comes down to is that it's like a really anti individualistic social structure, political structure that Communism is all about, um, giving yourself up to the whole that, and, and so while nobody talks towards the greater good, uh, that type of thing. So, yeah, exactly. But so while nobody really talks about it in these terms, but what that really means in terms of your, um, social structure is that everybody is just a cog in the wheel. Yeah. Like everybody is this just there to perform a job for the whole machine. You're you're like parts of a machine. Yeah. Um and uh individuality is um non-existent in terms of the structure and so therefore um really heavily discouraged in terms of the politics. Well, and to that point, us as libertarians and even conservatives, I think that a big reason we're so against that type of system is because we're not pro big government. We're not like pro government people in general. Mm -hmm. And for a system like that to work, like you've got to be like, Oh, all right. Government is great. Like I'm, I'm, I'm part of this and I'm, I'm helping, I'm part of something bigger and that type of thing. And, and libertarians in particular, like that ain't who we are. No, that's true. But I don't know that that description of it, like it's certainly in terms of nation states that's true. Yeah. Um, but anarcho communism isn't about big government. It's just yeah. about. Um, but it is still about everybody kind of giving up their own individuality to benefit the greater good. Yeah. So it's not about like having a strong central government, a great big strong central government in in an anarcho communist group. I mean, like tribal groups are are essentially anarcho-communist. Yeah. Um, but you're still on that, with that though, you're talking pretty small scale. There. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So and I can, I can see that type of structure working when, and it can be completely voluntary well, where, where it is completely voluntary and everybody kind of mm-hmm. like, this is what we're going to do to survive. And it's going to take all of us working together yeah. and that type of thing. Like think about, um, chimpanzee troops. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, and this is biology time no, um, right. or primatology time specifically, I guess. So, uh, chimpanzee troops are, um, groups of related males and unrelated females. Yeah. All right. So, um, 
when in chimpanzee troops, when the female reaches sexual maturity, she leaves and goes and finds another troop. Yeah. And so what that means is that the, that the entire troop of chimpanzees is, um, is built mm. around a bunch of males that are brothers, cousins, nephews, family. Yeah. yeah. Like they're all genetically related to each other. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I was talking about with this about somebody the other day, like, you know, if you're really puritanical, it's time to like hold the children's ears or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But so, um, chimpanzees, uh, in terms of their, uh, like their sexual structure, they pass around the females more or less. Yeah. Um, the, the females mate with a as bunch many of as the males. They can, yeah. Um, now in most social structures, this causes a problem. And in fact, in, in small scale human cultures, like one of the worst sins is adultery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. because it is really destructive to the social fabric. If you've got a bunch of people that are interdependent, yeah. um, that have to rely on and trust each other, then, uh, some guy sleeping with some other guy's wife, is, is a, a real problem. problem. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> right. So, um, but the chimpanzees don't have this problem. Yeah. And so why don't they have this problem? They don't have this problem because all of the males are genetically related. Yeah. So no matter who the father is, and they won't be able to know which one anyway, Yeah. Um, no matter who the father is, their it's genetic their line is still yeah. going to be they maintained. See, they see their self in that child. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think it's that, that conscious, but yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah. Um, and uh, and there's so there's not as they're relatively peaceful between the males. Yeah, I mean, not completely. Like they definitely fight. Like there's well, yeah. personalities and so forth. But this isn't one of the things that they fight about. Yeah. And and so, um, yeah. Here's the part where you hold your ears. So chimpanzees engage in what's called sperm competition. Okay. Chimpanzee te- testicles are like the size of your fist. Really? Right. They're huge, okay. huge. Um, and that's because since they, since so many males will mate with any one female, yeah. the best way to make sure that your sperm is the one that fertilizes the egg is to pump as much sperm into her as you possibly can. <laughs> yeah. Right. right? Um, and you can contrast that with, uh, gorillas. Yeah. Uh, gorillas have a single dominant male that mates with all the females. That's how their social structure is set up. Yeah. Um, and, uh, when males reach sexual maturity, they're kicked out and forced to find somewhere else, hmm. um, create their own harem, yeah. uh, et cetera. Well, um, gorillas that are like 800 pounds or something like that. Yeah. Um, their testicles are smaller than humans. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Because they, they don't just, need a lot. They're just, yeah. yeah, they're the only person mating. They're the only gorilla mating with that female. So, you know, yeah. it's they best to conserve the way. energy. Yeah. 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 Um, you don't have to, to devote that much energy to sperm production because yeah. there's no competition. Work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, humans are somewhere in between. There's like a, yeah. a mixed social setup for, <laughs> for humans. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, if there was a point to that. I don't, oh, um, is that the, the, uh, you know, thinking of chimpanzee troops as like a, a socialist or communist society is, seems appropriate. Yeah. Like they're all working together to, to, for the group to survive. Yeah. Um, and while they're certainly, like I said, there are certainly individual uh, aspects to them. It's, it's kind of subsumed with the, um, under the, um, the goal of the, the group, uh, prospering yeah yeah and so yeah small scale human cultures are are kind of the same way like everybody's kind of interdependent yeah and um and they just deal with the sexual thing differently by having all the 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 social structure built around a bunch of genetically related males yeah and that probably happens in some some small scale human cultures too because we have a wide range of social setups yeah like Humans are highly variable in their social structure, yeah. like much more so than anything else probably out there. Yeah. It's because we're smarter. Partly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's certainly part of it. I, I, I could make a case that there are some animals that are smarter than humans. Yeah. Um, you think about uh, like um, killer whales and some dolphins and so forth. Yeah. Um, you know, advanced language, uh, dialects. Yeah. Um, you know, including some things that people tend to point out with humans are, uh, are fairly unique. Um, like, uh, 
um, sex not for the point of procreation, but just for pleasure. Yeah. Um, of course, there's a group of chimpanzees that does that. Bonobos are like that too. It's like a a way of communicating almost. Oh, yeah. Um, but you know they don't have back to the dolphins and the killer whales, which are also just like really big dolphins. Um, they don't have thumbs. Yeah. It's, it's a problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't manipulate everything at the same time. Yeah. You know, you, you can't, uh, you can't use a tool and talk to your neighbor at the same time if you're a dolphin. Yeah. Cause you have to use your mouth for both of those things. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I, I just been thinking about that aspect of, of socialism, but that, it, it, um, kind of buries individuality. It, uh, um, throws, throws it away. I, I had a better term in my head, but I just couldn't pull it out. Yeah. Uh, I've been living off of NyQuil for the last <laughs> few days too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so maybe a little foggy. You got NyQuil brain. Got NyQuil brain, but it allows me to sleep at night. <laughs> well, that's, that's valuable. Yeah. Um, first few days of this, I wasn't sleeping either. And that was not helping my yeah. situation at all. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, uh, but of course, you know, we greatly value like voluntarism and, and so that's why I've never had a problem with, you know, I know that there's some libertarians out there, like some libertarian purists that, that want to push out the anarcho communists from the libertarian party where they've had a place. Yeah. Um, and I'm not one of those people cause you know, I, I, as long as it's voluntary, I don't see the problem. Yeah. Um, as long as you're not coercing people into the system, then whatever. Yeah. I don't care. I mean, it doesn't, it, I'm, I'm not, I'm not intent on market capitalism. I just think that that's the best, the way. best way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and certainly on a large scale, I don't see another option that wouldn't be coercive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you talk about large scale, I don't really see how you have another, I mean, there are other options, but like you mm -hmm. say, but then you're, forcing people in and that type mm. of thing. So, yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of a free market is that, that, um, transactions are all voluntary. Like, I, yeah. you know, everybody, and I guess people don't really look at it this way anymore. They, they see like, there's a lot of, I was getting talking to Brandon that, you know, a lot of young people see, um, capitalism as coercive. And I get it. If you're looking at, like what we have. Oh yeah. Without question. Um, but I think if you take government control out of it, then like if you have a real free market, then that's not the case. Like, yeah. um, that all transactions are voluntary and that you're only engaging in a transaction is both sides are only engaging in a transaction, the seller and the buyer. Um, if they think that what they're getting out of it is more valuable than what they put into it. Yeah. And, well, Go ahead. And you run into the thing of people like, well, yeah, but then then the big corporations are going to take over everything and and run everything with with these big monopolies and whatnot. But the truth is, is somebody will always be willing to step in and undercut. Yeah, you won't. Yeah. The the monopolies won't happen. With the reason monopolies happen is because of government, mm -hmm. um, not the other way around. So, yeah. Um, I completely agree there. It's uh, that the the biggest monopoly is government. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and that, you know, you, you hear about like Vanderbilt, like the Vanderbilt Enterprise way back yeah. 19th century, early 20th century, um, when other uh, businesses were trying to go in on the steamboat thing and that he would, you know, cut his prices to knock them out of the market. Yeah. Uh, now... I mean, I, I can see where you see that as a problem, but the consumers won there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And as soon as he raised his prices again, he would Somebody else see competition out. again. So exactly. it, it kept prices low. Even if he had enough capital built up that he could take a loss for a while yeah. um, until he could knock out his competition and then raise his prices again. But it kept the price low for the consumer no matter what, even if nobody else got into the... Yeah, got into the game, and eventually they did. Obviously, well, but, they always will. Yeah, yeah. Once because you can't do that forever. You can't run yeah. at a loss forever. Exactly. Um, 
I remember here locally is a few years ago now when the Bucky's opened up. Um, they got in a bunch of trouble because they were selling gas below what they were paying for it. Yeah. And that was like a big thing. And I was like, dude, like th- it was the most irritating thing to me. So but we like, have key lime fudge to make up the difference. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, I was like, well, they can't do that forever. Or if they can, more power to them. Why are you trying yeah. to take away cheap gas? Like, yeah. <laughs> if they can profit enough off of um, the other things that they sell, to sell their gas at less than market. Yeah. Great. Why why yeah, why would you want to stop that? Yeah, I mean the only I mean but it's we've not, got we've got laws on the books about that. Yeah, like they were they've gotten some trouble over that. Uh-huh. So I just I it boggles my mind. Like, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Well, it's you know, government uh, interfering with the market again. Yeah. Um there was something else I was going to say about that though. Oh, so like but one of the things that I hear is well, you know, what about food? You have to buy food. Yeah, right. Like that's the that's a big example that people use a lot. Well, you have to buy food, and so foods are yeah. right. <laughs> and water too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Trying to take away my right to water. Um, I don't want to go down that path. <laughs> you don't want to go down that. Okay. Yeah. I, I I thought that's where we were going. My bad. <laughs> No, what I was going to say is that, yeah, you have to buy food, but you don't have to buy bananas. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, there's there's a, food is a, is a wide range there's a, there's, of. There's a big market for food. Yeah, food is a wide range of products. Considering we all have to have it, there's a pretty big market for it. Yeah. Um, it's a wide range of products, and so you don't have to buy any individual piece of that. Yeah. Um, unless you got a two-year-old, apparently, like it has to be Velveeta and, you know, whatever. <laughs> but, um the the thing is that you can go into the the store and if uh if they're charging so much for eggs you can buy beans instead oh or dude. and if by the way we've lived through that pretty recently yeah. i work in retail and we sell eggs and yeah like for a while the price yeah. of eggs that's all i heard about <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah for the most part people still bought them but they only bought one dozen where people generally buy two or three at a time mm. <laughs> so well, that's maybe not the greatest example then because yeah. people weren't changing their buying habits except for in the amount rather than like yeah. spreading out into other things. You know, yeah. but the point that I'm trying to make is that like if the price of apples goes way up, you don't have to buy apples. You can buy oranges or bananas or you yeah. know, spinach or you know something else. Yeah. Like there's all these other options out there. And you know, of course the problem now is that inflation has raised the price of everything. Yeah. Um, a certain amount, but you still have options within the category of food that you can move from one thing to another. If beef gets too expensive, you can buy chicken instead. Dude, I hear it a lot. Whatever. So um, we sell meat and stuff where I'm at, and I hear mm-hmm. people all the time talk about how th- when they're buying their meat, like, well, this is a treat. We don't normally get to buy meat that often because mm-hmm. it's just so expensive. Yeah. Um, which is, it's wild to me, but like I say, that's that's something I see regularly. Yeah, I mean, you so. go to McDonald's and get almost meat. Almost meat, yeah. Right. They'll never sponsor. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wasn't looking for McDonald's to sponsor. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's always options within that, that broad category of food. The Where you run into problems is electricity. Kat, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> Yeah, have a good that's old what time. I thought. <laughs> All right. Um, the is where you where you're talking about like utilities, yeah, or something like that. But that is a a state enforced monopoly. All yeah. these utilities, yeah. Um, and I say state in the broadest sense, not like yeah. your state, but government. the county, yeah, yeah, county government or whatever it happens to be, city government, yeah. whoever. Um, there's only one place that I can buy electricity here. Yeah. There's yeah. only one place that I can buy water. Yeah. Um, they're they're both private companies technically. Actually, I don't. Is Daphne Utilities private? I don't know that Daphne it's Utilities is through private, Riviera. So. No, Riviera's sure. electricity. Electricity, yeah, yeah. Daphne I don't Utilities know about the water. is water. Yeah. Um, actually, Daphne Utilities may may actually be a city. Yeah. Business. Well, I know, but. Where um, I live, it's all the city owns all of it. Yeah, yeah. R- Riviera is technically a private company, but they have a, yeah. a government enforced monopoly. They're the only ones that can sell power electricity. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
so like all these monopolies are state enforced and I, I can't negotiate about the price and and you can say well that you know government keeps the price down but then you're tr- mm. but then you're trusting government. That's my problem. Is yeah, what? how do they know what the price should be first? Yeah, off? well, yeah, exactly. Um, and and secondly, like if you opened it up, it, it's not like uh, you know the grids aren't all interconnected. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> electricity is fungible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so you know that I could buy from some neighbor um, electric company or or what have you. Yeah. Uh, and I'll just that buy would, a big generator and supply the whole the whole street. Yeah, because propane's cheap or yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, like I'm making only service five or six people, but like I say, I'll get it to them cheap and make a profit myself. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So if you had access to the grid. Yeah. Well, that would be the trick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you create your own. You just run a. <laughs> it could be real South Alabama, which is. <laughs> Just the running extension, extension cables all yeah. over the place, right. all over the neighborhood. Uh, make sure those are outdoor <laughs> extension cables. Don't use the indoor. Yeah. You don't want to start a fire. Wrap some electrical tape around the connection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. run over it with the lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, oh, man. gosh. Uh, so anyway, but the, just the competition would keep the prices down, too. And, uh, of course, they ran into the problem was a couple of years ago during the freeze in Texas. Oh, yeah, um, where the grid collapsed. Yeah, where the grid collapsed. And, you know, a part of that was that they hadn't maintained it. Yeah. Like, they they hadn't built the systems necessary to um, to either handle the load or to um, pick up if there was a failure or, or what have you. Whereas, you know, a private entity that doesn't have a government monopoly has an incentive to do those things. Uh, a government monopoly does not yeah oh yeah yeah the best thing to do is to just like you know keep whatever profit you can yep um and then you know maybe we should be paying more for energy i mean uh, certainly where the left is pushing with the green stuff yeah well that's an agenda i think to to drive up the prices so people use less well, I was thinking it's the other way. Drive up the prices so that the price of solar doesn't look so bad anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's that. <laughs> or, you know, something along those lines. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can talk about that for a minute. Like I said, I didn't have anything prepared, really, yeah. um, for this. But this is... We're freestyling tonight. Yeah. This is one of the issues with the green energy thing is that, it, like, it all sounds good. Oh, you know, we'll, we'll save all these people, but... First off, I'm not convinced of that. Second... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and we'll have a podcast, like I've got so much information on climate We've change. We've talked I about doing a climate change episode for I know, a long it's, time. it's one that... We really need to do it. It's one that I have to spend some time preparing for, because that's going to be yeah. a... That's going to be the kind of argument that some people hate where I'm going to be giving you statistics. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> because I don't know how else to make the case. Yeah. And... But anyway, th- what I was going to say there is that the, you know, the idea that... Um, that in order to combat climate change, we got to completely change our energy system and that that will be beneficial to everybody because the climate won't change as much, which yeah. like even granting the man-made climate change issue, I'm, I'm again, not convinced that changing our energy system is going to have that much of an impact Yeah. on, <laughs> on the trend. Yeah. Uh, but the real problem is that it doesn't save people because the cost of these energy systems is so much higher than what we're using. Now. I mean, the reason that we're using fossil fuels is not just because of the uh, the energy lobby that won't allow to do anything. No, the reason is because people don't want to. It's effective. people don't want to pay. It's effective. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it's, and, it, and it's inexpensive. It's yeah, exactly. Um, relatively inexpensive compared to these other systems. Yeah. The people that have solar panels and solar use solar energy are wealthy people. There's a reason for that because it's expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and especially to maintain an entire grid on an unreliable source of power. Yeah. Another problem is that they're trying to put every. They're trying to f- find a one size fits all answer to this issue in terms of green energy like yeah. well do we use wind power or do we use solar power? no you just use whatever's easiest where you are like yeah. here we're probably using tidal power 
or yeah. wave power, you know, yeah. like there's, there's systems set up to uh, well, capture can, energy from just I, like the general yeah. waves. I can tell you Florida is covered in sun panels. <laughs> Like the last trip yeah. I made through Florida, I was like, man, they've just like everywhere where it used to be orange groves, mm -hmm. they're solar panels now. When I was a kid, my grandfather was a contractor. And um, when I was a kid and we used to go visit them in Florida, uh, they had a uh, they had a water heater, um, but the water generally wasn't heated by the water heater. Yeah. They he had built it so that the um, the the piping for the for hot water ran back and forth under the roof. Oh, nice! And so the the solar he heated the heat from the roof. Yeah, yeah. The, the sun hitting the roof heated the water. Yeah, and you had a water heater for you know nighttime or yeah. during or if it's you cold. Know, yeah, yeah, or you know, uh, well, even if it's cold, actually, the sun works still, pretty well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but if you if you have cloudy days and so yeah. on, um, but uh, you know, it saved them. I don't know how much energy. But that's a really simple system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, the problem is that, you know, if a roof or if a limb falls through your roof during a hurricane, <laughs> yeah, you got a mess, yeah. um, like more of a mess than you would otherwise have. Right. Um, so there's trade-offs, I guess, is, was the point or of that. Or if you have a busted pipe. Yeah. All of a sudden it's raining in your house. Well, you kind of have that problem already. I, I've if you have experienced a that a, yeah. a, you know, a little bit here, but... Yeah. Um, and I have a one-story house, so you know what you're talking about. Uh, maybe I don't. <laughs> maybe <laughs> some of the stuff runs up. You have pipes over. running through your ceiling. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Yeah. So I don't like. I can okay. tell you, my, like my house, we don't have any pipes running through the ceiling. Yeah. So. Um. But the problem is that the these alternative energy sources are more expensive, and so if you cut off fossil fuels and yeah. force everybody to use these more expensive energy sources, then it affects poor people the most yep. that they suddenly have to devote more of their resources towards keeping their house warm or cool or, you know, having yeah. hot water or <laughs> what yeah. have you. Um, and, uh, and that means that they have less resources to devote to everything else, food, clothing, yeah. and so on. So it hurts the economy. It definitely hurts the economy. You just got to let it happen on its own time. Yeah. And well, these thing these things will will become the primary when they're ready to be the primary. But I yeah. don't. I just don't think that you can force that through government. Yeah, you like, can't make it happen. Yeah. Um, not without a lot of pain. And the problem is that you have a whole bunch of people that are saying and may actually believe that yeah. it's it's necessary anyway. Like yeah. We know it's going to cause a lot of pain, but it'll save a lot of pain in the future or something like that. That's the argument. You know, we may kill hundreds of thousands of people by uh, upping their energy costs, but how many will die if we don't, you know, yeah. is this weird question. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, I've always said that the answer to the problem is prosperity anyway. Yeah. If you if you get government out of the way and let the market act, and like I said on the, the podcast with, uh, with Brandon and Greg... Um, you know, my definition of communism is a way to make everybody equally poor instead of unequally prosperous. Yeah. But, um, you know, this is part of what I'm, I mean by that is that if you have government interference in the market in this way, then it makes everybody, it makes everybody poorer. Yeah, exactly. Like it just, it just pulls wealth out of the system. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if you really want changes to occur, then you need to let them happen naturally in the market. And the answer to the, to, the, to the problem is prosperity. Because when people are prosperous, then they can make decisions based on their principles or their um, philosophy or their belief in the future or whatever, in what the future holds, rather than just based on the balance in their checkbook. Yeah. I can't afford this. I've got to go with yeah. the, you know. Yeah. If I I have to buy fossil fuel energy because that's the least expensive thing and I don't have money to waste. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to All right. I've got money to cover all my energy costs. I'm going to put some percentage of it into green energy even though it costs more because I can afford to and I think that this is important. Yeah. And the more people do that, of course, then the faster the technology develops as well. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, those are essentially investments in a lot of ways. Yeah. So, um, and the more people are reliant on that kind of energy, the more the, the system has to develop anyway. Yeah. 
Um, I read a book years ago um, by Robert Zubrin, Dr. Robert Zubrin. He used to be a, uh, a NASA scientist. He, he was a big part of the, the Mars Project. Um, that was another book of his that I read, actually. It was uh, Mars something. I don't remember. It was about the plan to get to Mars by 2020 or something oh, yeah. like that written in the, like when they started, if they had started in the nineties, yeah, written in the mid nineties or early nineties, yeah. I guess, yeah. um, didn't happen. And I, I think that's why he's not at NASA. Also, I think he quit NASA because they weren't devoting because, time to this project. Yeah. Because like, yeah. Well, yeah um, so he wrote another book, uh, after nine 11 called energy victory. Yeah. And, uh, it was, it was about freeing us of fossil fuels because fossil fuels, the the sale of fossil fuels out of the Middle East funds a lot of um, bad stuff. Terror, yeah, terrorist activity and so forth. Yeah, uh, did at the time, probably still does. I, I I'm sure it does. Um, and he was talking specifically about uh, gasoline. Yeah, through most of the book, not all of it, but through most of the book, and how we could move to a different kind of automo- automotive fuel economy. And he was pushing alcohol economy. Yeah. Um, ethanol, methanol, et cetera. Yeah. But what I liked about his system is that it was strongly market-based. Yeah. And about like making these things available um, and letting the market decide, letting the market pick the winner. Yeah. Like th- these are all viable fuel sources, I don't know what'll work out best in the end. Yeah. What'll end up being most efficient for people. Cause this may cost more, um, but it gives you more miles to the gallon. This costs less, but it gives you fewer miles to the gallon. It's less efficient fuel. You know, how does this compare like in the end and in how are these engines developed to better use these different fuel types and yeah. so on. And he's like, I don't know what the answer is. There's yeah. This isn't something that I can say, well, we should use this particular alcohol-based fuel system because this well, is the best one. I don't know. Yeah. And the market figures these things out better than any other system out there. Mm-hmm. Um, like I say, I mean, once you send something to market, like you're going to know whether it's, like I say, and it'll grow and get better through the market. Yeah. You know, more people will pick up on it and, and tweak it and fix mm-hmm. it. And it just, it, it works. Yeah. I mean, what happens when you build an engine that's, built to run on methanol. Yeah. Like how, how effective does that become? And, uh, and of course there's a whole bunch of waste agricultural product that can be used for biofuels. Yeah. The government pays an obscene amount of money out every year to farmers to not grow stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, you know, yeah. I, I don't know what to say about that exactly, but no, yeah. I knew a guy who had some farmland in central Alabama that would check the lists every year to see what crops he should declare so that he could get government subsidy. When they didn't grow? Or yeah. when they, yeah, when they didn't grow. Okay. Yeah, to not grow them. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it boggles the mind. Right? Yeah, this is <laughs> so he had a farm that didn't grow anything. Yeah. Right? Didn't employ anybody and still was profitable. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's a, that's a feat that only government can achieve. <laughs> no kidding, <laughs> <laughs> that, that ain't working in the real economy. <laughs> so, this is, you know, there are answers out there, and the market can find them, and the market's searching for them. Yeah, everybody's looking for the next big thing. It's bouncing again to another topic. It's it's like this idea that oh, they could cure cancer any day. They just don't want to because the treatments for people that have cancer are more profitable, more lucrative than, uh, than a cure to cancer. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. Whoever the first person to develop a cancer cure is, is going to make a tremendous amount of money, more money than God. Yeah. 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 Generational money. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like anybody's holding back on this. Yeah. You know, it, it may, I don't think it'll actually cost the medical system in the long run anyway. No. But um but nobody's holding back on this to benefit big pharma or whatever. Like mm-hmm. somebody's going to find this. I contribute towards research into this. They're like look, they're looking. Yeah. I promise oh, yeah. they are yeah. Yeah. they are looking. I'd be very upset if my money was going to them <laughs> to like pack something away in a vault and never use it. Yeah. <clears throat> Pretty sure it's not. I talked to the CEO. Yeah. Uh 
So, uh, you know, the, the innovation, there's money in innovation, even if there's a bunch of people that don't benefit from it. Yeah. Like, and you know, I could be a Luddite, but I'm, I'm all for development. You want to talk about AI a minute? Sure. This is another one of those things that I don't understand why everybody's so scared of it. Like yeah. everybody watched Terminator too many times. And I love that stuff too, man. That's <laughs> one of my favorite, you know, sci-fi universes is the whole Terminator thing. Yeah. Um, well, except for these movies over the last like 15 or 20 years, the, the early movies, <laughs> the were really early good, stuff was good. Yeah. And the Sarah Connor Chronicles, that was the TV series was good, but it's drifted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a kind yeah. way of saying, yeah. but like, I'm just not, I'm just not concerned about AI. First off, what they call AI here is not at all intelligent. Yeah. I, I don't understand why anybody could be, be a feared of AI. Anybody who has a Roomba <laughs> should know that you have nothing to fear. Yeah. Watch that thing get stuck in a corner. Ask for help. You take it out, put it somewhere else. It goes right back into that corner and gets <laughs> itself stuck again. Yeah. This is, this is artificial intelligence. And, and the existence, like the current artificial intelligence is really just, um, a, uh, an algorithm. Yeah. Just like, it's just a, it's just an extensive algorithm. No. It's it's looking for patterns. It's trying to copy patterns. It's trying to to uh, fill in the blank of what it thinks should go next. Yeah, that's that's really all it is. And that's I mean that's pretty good for a computer. Yeah, and it'll get more and more powerful without a doubt. But I, I'm just not worried about it reaching a point where it actually is outsmarting us. Yeah, in any way. And I, I don't understand why people are concerned about this thing and. And I think the real concern is that it'll put people out of work. That's the concern I hear. And all there's the time. there's a truth in that certainly because yeah. the development of any new technology, labor saving device, yeah, puts people out of work. Yeah, and it frees them up to do other more productive things. Yeah. Well, I from where I'm sitting at least, and like I say, I'm I'm in retail, so it's a little different. But I have the Roomba, so I don't need to hire a maid. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that no maid is employed. Yeah. Or nobody that would have otherwise been a maid is employed. There's other things to do. Well, there there is a, a, at least in our area, there is a massive labor shortage. Yeah. Like you can you can find a job like quick. <laughs> like it's just it's what it is. Now, I'm not going to say you're going to make a million dollars working any of these jobs, but there's jobs out there. Um, and decent paying jobs, like mm -hmm. I say, not like, uh, like I say, you're not going to be rich, but you can make a living. Yeah, you you're making, like, you could go into Publix right now, yeah, and make thirty plus thousand dollars a year as at, at an entry level job. Yeah, and it's like I say, it's entry level, so I mean, like I say, it's going to take a little bit to get where you need to go. But yeah. as a young person, you can walk in there and and within mm -hmm. a couple of years have a career. Yeah, you know, less than that probably. Mm -hmm. And thirty thousand isn't bad down here. No, no. Uh, and that's a job that would have paid half that when I was younger. Actually, oh, just a yeah. few years ago, it would have paid just half that pre-COVID. Yeah, um, is what I would say. Yeah. And they're offering so much money because they need people in there. Yeah, it's kind of how the system works. Yeah. So, know. so the but my, the, it goes to the point though that like so AI eliminating some jobs. There, there are other jobs out there. Like mm -hmm. there, um, there's other things going on. You know? Well, and just the existence of AI will create jobs as well. Yeah. Um, you know, whatever it, I mean, I can't predict necessarily what it's going to be. No, but, but I was going to say, because if you could, then you'd be. Oh yeah. No, no, I, I, <laughs> yeah. It, Bobby, if you're listening to this, that's something that we should talk about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. There, there may be a future in this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, one of my, so my roommate, my freshman year of college, who was a friend of mine from high school and before I knew him from Scouts before then. Yeah. Um, he, he told me one time, he said, Yeah, I, I don't know. And this was in the 90s also, like mid to late 90s. Yeah. He said, I don't understand all these people that are worried about computers taking over the world. 
Because this was a concern even then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It always has been. Not worried about... I don't understand these people that are worried about computers taking over the world. See, the way I figure it is at that very last moment, like right before the computer takes over the world, Mm -hmm. that's when the screensaver will kick on. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Oh, man. And so, yeah, they they have this concern that uh, computers will get so intelligent that they'll be able to build a computer more intelligent than them. Yeah. And that it'll just run away from there. Yeah. I just, I don't see it. Yeah. (coughs) Well, they already programmed... made it 40 minutes in before I had to turn and cough. Nice. Well, they've already made the AI that's out to destroy the world, so it's it's out there. It's doing its thing. It's working through the net right now. It's working through the net trying to destroy the world. But then somebody else created one... That's good. That's job is to stop it. So I think okay. we're gonna. I think we're gonna be all right. <laughs> she saw, swallowed a spider to catch the fly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maybe. You heard that old. I mean, I I think I understand it, but no, I haven't heard it. There's like I don't know. It's a nursery rhyme or something is where it? this lady swallows a fly and then she swallows a spider to catch the fly and then she swallows a frog to catch the spider and then like it keeps getting oh, it just bigger escalates. and bigger and bigger until she's like. I don't know, swallows a horse or something and it kills her? I don't remember. Um, <laughs> no, no, I've never. That's, that's a new one on me. Yeah. Ask my so, mom about that one. Right. She'll, be able to, <laughs> yeah. she'll be able to sing it to you. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's... I, I'm just yeah. not... Yeah, I'm just not worried about this thing. I, I don't think... I don't think that it, there's anything that we can't control in this. Now, we can't foresee yeah. the consequences. That's true. Yeah. But I, I just... Every technological development has brought great things and bad things. And fear. Yeah, and fear. Uh, I mean, uh, nuclear energy has been a huge boon to society. Yeah. Now we're trying to quit it for some reason and spend more money on other things like I was talking about earlier. But um, nuclear energy has been a huge benefit to society, to human society. Like a a tremendous amount of energy um, available... And this is really what we thrive on is energy. But it also brought the bomb. In fact, the bomb came first. Yeah, yeah. So we just got to find the way to use AI. I, I'm, I see places where it can be really beneficial. Uh, I don't, I just don't fear it. And and it'll, it'll take some jobs away, but it'll create new jobs as well. Um, it'll free up people for more productive things that we can use, uh, you know, instead of them being devoted to things that AI can do instead. Yeah. You know, just now there's more labor available for other things. It makes us all richer. Yeah. Yeah. That's the goal. Mm-hmm. Rising be. tide and all boats and all that. That, that, that thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I did, um, look at the, the thing you mentioned to me. I assume this is what you're talking about. Uh, we killed an Iraqi militia leader yes yes in iraq yes yeah yeah well, you say we so was the it united a, states go- was, well oh, was i don't us? know because because that that was what that's was... the impression i got on anti-war today but i guess i, I might have just been reading into it yeah. um something that wasn't there i, uh, I the, just took the a quick look at an I article got was that it was um that nobody had claimed responsibility and that it was okay. done by a drone so it mm. was a state but yeah on not knowing who well it, he was a leader of one of the um popular uh militia units yeah. uh, pop no popular mobilization units that's what they call them pmus in iraq that are yeah. like uh national guard kind of yeah um they are incorporated they are a part of the iraqi state military yeah was he have affiliated with hamas I don't believe so, but it, they <laughs> We may be said talking that, about a different one then. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe that's why I'm so sure that it was the U.S. that killed this guy. Yeah. He um, was implicated in some of the attacks on U.S. bases. Yeah. Um, in the Middle East. Yeah. In Iraq, I think, primarily. Yeah. And so they killed him. Uh, you know, these attacks that have been occurring since October uh, 7th. Yeah. And, um, but the, the problem is same thing when we, when we killed Soleimani, um, who was Iranian, we killed him in Iraq. And when we killed him, we also killed a couple of guys, including, uh, 
popular mobilization unit leader then. Yeah. And so the problem is that we're, we're supposedly allied with this country, Iraq. Yeah. They don't want us there, but we're still there anyway. Yeah. And we're killing their people. Yeah. On their soil without their permission. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so they're having a real, um, they're having a real issue with this uh, related to sovereignty. I imagine. Yeah. And so, um, uh, so maybe that's not the one that you were talking about. That's the only one I saw yeah. on anti-war today when I yeah, like, peeked I, at it. I went back. It, it wasn't, I can't remember now. It wasn't in Qatar though. Like you had said, it was somewhere else. Yeah. I, so, cause the, the Hamas leadership. Yeah. Like the political, political leadership, leaders, leadership. Yeah. Is, is mostly in Qatar. Is it? Okay. Um, so that's why I assumed and that would be again like a huge mistake. A, a, yeah, you know the U.S. doesn't really they they make the claim in Ukraine, but they don't really care about sovereignty at all. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I'm interested to see what happens in this as we close in on this election. Uh, Colorado put a stay on their own court decision about keeping oh, him off the ballot. Did they really? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Um, I assume in anticipation of the Supreme Court taking the case. What about Maine? Did they follow suit? Uh, to my knowledge, no. Uh, as yeah. far as I know, the the Maine um, so Secretary of State is still... Holding the line? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's very uh, proud of herself, it seems, too, from the <laughs> interviews that I've seen. Yeah. Uh, uh, like I said, that's that's we talked about it on the last podcast, but that's it's a dangerous road to go down. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of talk that the the claims that they're making, um, trying to use the 14th Amendment, that uh, you know the the section that they that they're using, Section Three, identifies a bunch of offices, including electors of the president, but yeah. not the president. It doesn't mention the president. It starts at Congress, yeah, at the legislature, the senators and congressmen, yeah. Um, it does not mention the president, and it references an oath. Anybody who's taken a, a particular oath yeah. that isn't the president's oath. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know if they're trying to make the case that, well, it was just a little oversight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they really meant to include all that, but they uh, they left it out for yeah. some unknown Clearly reason. Clearly it's important that we, we include this now, too. Um, but it's interesting that they name all these offices, including electors of the president, but not the president or vice president. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's there's a strong case to be made that the that Section 3 of uh, the 14th Amendment doesn't even apply to the president. Yeah. It's wild to me. I mean, the clear answer here is to settle this at the ballot box mm. and just, you know. But the, the reason these avenues are being taken is because the powers that be are afraid of what that means. Yeah. They're um, afraid that Trump might win again. Yeah. And I think they're afraid of that with good reason. Because yeah. I now, a few months ago, a while back, before all these prosecutions, I would have said I didn't think Trump had that good of a chance. Yeah. But he is. People have rallied to him as he's been attacked, mm-hmm. and that's their own doing. He's been vindicated on a lot of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's he's been vindicated on um, his uh, his talk about the wars. He's been vindicated in a huge way on immigration. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. It, yeah. The, and it, as wild as it may seem, the immigration issue may be the one that sends him back into the presidency again from, but cause not, it's just a bunch of racists here in this country. Well, not from the right though. <laughs> I think more people from the left are starting to realize that this immigration thing is a big problem. Yeah. They're having issues in Chicago. Yeah, and New uh, York too. Um, these big cities that were um, sanctuary cities are starting to have a real problem all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. And the the elect it's not it's not it's the electorate that's like, wait a minute, like we yeah. can't we can't do this. Like this is a problem, um, and that could that could impact this next election. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that's something that a lot of people are considering right now. But that's that's going to have a huge impact this next go round. Yeah. So yeah, it is. Be, um, it's going to be interesting to. This is going to be a wild election season. The next few months are going to get crazy. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, I, when when's the Iowa caucus? When's it's coming up pretty quick, right? It's this month. Yeah, it's this month. So 
yeah, thing, things are fixing to get ripping and roaring. I um I had actually considered talking about the Nikki Haley thing, but maybe we'll save that for next one if it's even worth bringing up next time. I don't know what's going on with Nikki Haley. So. Oh, she got <laughs> asked about the causes of the Civil War, and she just kind of meandered for a little bit about the role of government. Oh, really? Um, and didn't mention slavery. Oh, yeah. And so then she's being lambasted for not saying that the Civil War was about slavery. Really? Mm-hmm. I'll have to listen to the clip. I'll be interested to... I haven't heard that. Nikki Haley's not somebody I exactly follow. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, would... it's interesting to see them attacking her because she seemed to be the uh, the the mainstream choice for the GOP. Well, I can tell you that's um, that's the person that the left wants in. Yeah. Um, just listening to left wing media, like they're like they want it to be Nikki Haley and somebody from else, like Joe <laughs> Biden or somebody you know, other than Joe Biden. Yeah, really, somebody other than some Joe Biden. But yeah, um, that's that's who they want because they win either way. There, like, I mean, yeah. if it's between Joe <laughs> Biden and Nikki Haley, like the establishment has won. <laughs> yeah, that's that's certainly true. So well, they're they're going after her right now. I mean, she just. Uh, well, it, to me, she just sounded like she she has no real awareness of history. And it's not just because she didn't say anything about slavery. I don't know that that's necessarily... I mean, slavery was obviously a factor. Well, yeah. um, and it was, the, it was the particular policy that, um, that kind of, uh, I don't know, like broke everything down. Between yeah. the north and the well, south, it was the it was definitely the catalyst for a lot of other things that were going yeah. on. Now, what I what I can't say is that if slavery weren't an issue, that there wouldn't have been a civil war because I think there yeah. probably would have been anyway. Yeah. Maybe not at that time, but there was already like like a schism already existed. Yeah. Um. About about the role of government and the the war itself regardless of how they're trying to whitewash it now was instigated by the, um, the North not being willing to allow secession. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why there was a war. Yeah. It, and the, I mean, Lincoln well, himself because, said that he didn't care whether there was slavery or not. And yeah. there was, there was still some slavery in the North, I, I think at the outset of the civil war. Yeah. Um, but the the question really that was settled by the war wasn't the, the question of slavery. It was the question of whether states were allowed to remove themselves from the compact. Are these truly independent states or are they all connected as one? Yeah. Um, and because the way the Constitution's laid out, like they're independent states mm-hmm. that that just kind of, you know, unite. Agree on these certain things. They're, yeah. they're, they're a military and economic alliance. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but not since the Civil War, because that was, like you say, that was a, that was an argument that was lost on the battlefield. Yeah. So. Um, I'd almost like to read some, uh, oh, why can't I think of his name? He's one of my favorite philosophers that I bring up on here all the time. Um, Thomas Sowell? No, no, older. Oh yeah. Uh, he was writing like during the time of the Civil War. Oh okay. Um, oh, I can't think of his name anyway. All right. Well, uh, let's wrap up there. Uh, yeah. My my brain's foggy enough. So <laughs> wrapping up on some good old Civil War talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spend a little more time on the history of that. Uh, people just don't know anymore. I mean, the, well, it's not taught. Yeah, the default answer is well, the Civil War was over slavery. It was those racists in the South against those, you know, brave Northerners and something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but that's that's such a simplistic view of the situation. Yeah. Anyway, um, everything's more nuanced than that. I, you know, say something brilliant and nuanced about it, but I, I can't. <laughs> but, right but your brain's broken. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll we'll wrap it there. Um, and uh, we'll be back next week, I suspect. I see no reason why not. All right, good. Um, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Like and share, comment, subscribe, uh, criticize, review. You can drop me an email anytime, michael at thelibertymike.com. Um, 
all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.